welcome to this video. I'm Gavin. I, I like analog photography, alternative photography, and I've got a lot of videos on that stuff on my channel. And if you're into that, uh, definitely subscribe and uh, and check out my other videos. But we're going to talk about f-stop timers. Uh, this guy, Gene Nocum, was the guy behind the f-stop timer. In a, I think it was in 1987 he came to market with, with such a timer. They were extraordinarily expensive. I couldn't afford one. Uh, in this video, I'm going to actually make one from off-the-shelf off the parts that you can get off Amazon. And I think it came in at about, I don't know, under 30 euros. Uh, an incredible piece of technology that is so easy to make these days. Uh, I'm going to put it together in a couple of parts in this video. This is the first part of the video and I will go through the basic functionality and the features in it and then in the next part it'll be more refined. Uh, so it's based on this guy Gene Nocum and he is really an incredible printer and if you can get this book I definitely would recommend it. Uh, he does some amazing strip tests and how to really get the how to get stuff exactly the way it should look, the way you want it to look, and to, to make it repeatable. And that's the key, that's the reason why you go with an f-stop timer. Uh, because, to be honest, a timer, a time-based timer, uh, isn't really anything to do with photography. Because photography is measured in light, in stops, half stops, and full stops. And that's where an f-stop timer does all the maths for you and you can just figure out well I want to increase it by half a stop or a third of a stop uh, even a sixth of a stop or even a twelfth of a stop and that's what an f-stop timer can do and uh, so in this book here he goes through a lot of examples of that and how to improve your darkroom processes if you want to get into darkroom printing is this one here uh, by Larry Barclay also a fantastic book but I'm going to get into the timer. Uh, I'll give you a brief introductory to the timers that I have in my darkroom and then I'll actually go into explaining how to make an f-stop timer. All the instructions are on my blog and all the parts are easy to get. So let's get started. So this is a darkroom timer from the 90s. This is a Jobo Jobotronic 200. It's quite an advanced timer. Uh, it's got some nice features in it uh, for paper and you can go plus or minus a stop on it. Um, but still not an f-stop timer. This is pretty much a rudimentary timer. You've got a start button here to start the time. You set the time with this dial. Um, it goes from 1 second to 80 seconds very very straightforward and you've got your focus light to turn it on and off this incredible gorgeous looking timer in a kind of a metal instruction with metal knobs it's with an incredible display and this is really a beautiful f-stop timer made by Philomat in Munich Germany it is 600 euros uh, it is incredibly beautiful um, the timer that we're going to make pretty much does exactly this except it's not in such an incredibly gorgeous construction. Um, yeah, if you don't feel like doing a DIY build, check these guys out. Either way, check them out. Incredible stuff they make. Um, yeah, I gotta mention it. So here are the features of this f-stop timer. It's a very simple interface. I've written all the symbols down here below. This one is your cancel, this button here. This is the focus light, which we can turn on and off, or in larger. Uh, this is our strip test mode. We can change the brightness by holding the button down. The brightness will go to the lowest setting when we're exposing on paper, when we press the go button or the play button at the end. And then we have the next button here, which is our steps. So we hold our finger down that, we can see the steps that's available to us. So let's choose um, a third of a stop, okay. So we've got a third of a stop going on here. So we'll just press the, our go button here. The enlarger light comes on and stops. Let's increase that now to, okay, to eight seconds, which is three stops so we can press play here 
it'll go all the way through, or we can cancel it at any time. So, so let's say our base exposure is, mm, let's say it's four seconds, okay? And we, we're we going to turn on a focus light here. And then if we go into our strip test mode, tells our base exposure, and then our third of a stop, sixth of a stop, our six, six, uh, two thirds of a stop, one stop, two stops, it'll go through the whole thing. Let's just show that preview again. And as you can see that it goes through each of the lights. So that's a preview of how a strip test would look like in terms of seconds. So if we turn off our focus light here now, and we press our strip test button, expose our paper for four seconds, first strip, second strip, the third strip, fifth strip, and the last one. And that's how we can do a strip test with this timer. Uh, and you can see the indications are up here of what these LEDs mean. That's our focus light, that's our larger light, and these are the steps of the strip tests, and this, the, this, this step increments are up here as well. So let's leave it on one stop, we go up a stop. So that pretty much demonstrates what, what you can do with this little timer. Very simple and quite powerful. So to make this darkroom timer, we're going to use this module here, which is a TM1638. It comes with eight push buttons and eight LEDs and eight seven segment displays here. Perfect for our darkroom timer. This part here will be for the f-stops and this will show us our time. Now to make this work, we're gonna need some kind of controller like an Arduino or a WeMOS, which is an ESP32. So an ESP32 WeMOS is like this, uh, USB in the back. Uh, but I started off using my build with an Arduino Uno, and they're fairly cheap. And this has a plastic case here, and I just stuck my module in front of it, and I've got some wire here for power and three wires for my data and my clock and the various uh, data that I need to control this board. It's relatively simple. The cable that does come with this board uh, would be okay for the Wemos, but you need a kind of a deep one cable which has pins at the end of it. And that's what I have in this. And of course, you'll need a USB cable, but most of these uh, Adreno Uno boards come with a USB cable. That's all you need for this part of the build. Uh, in part two, I will do the relay and the beeper, but to get you up and running, to see how it actually works, and to actually play with it, and to see how the, the whole darkroom timer operates, uh, that's the bare minimum, and it's pretty much uh, within 10 minutes, downloading the code, assembling this, you're done. It's really simple build, and that's the idea of this darkroom timer, that anybody can use it, uh, it's accessible, and it's very powerful what it can do. On my GitHub page, and it's in here called Darkroom Timer, and you can basically download the code from here in the zip file, or you can use Git. Zip file is probably the easiest. So if you can't wait for part two, you could just connect up one of these relay modules and your beeper and you'll be done. That would be a very, very simple darkroom timer. Of course, you've got to wire in your power, um, your, your switch, um, some sockets for your, uh, for your enlarger to turn it on and off, but that would be the raw guts of, of the darkroom timer. However, in part two, I will use a different board uh, to do all of that and more. So wait till part two, uh, which I'll release after this video.
If you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the little notification bell and hope to see you on the next video. Goodbye.